Serena, you have been investing in early stage companies for nine years now, but this new fund takes it to the next level. You say you want to invest in the next generation of champions. Who and where do you think those champions are? We don't check just one box. We really are looking forward to well, well, health and wellness, femtech as well as fintech. Obviously, we're, the crypto space and the Web3 space and NFTs are something that is on everyone's mind. And um, I don't think you can really have a VC firm and not have some really big part of that into into uh, it, big part of your fund into that part of the Web3 space. So um, we're kind of like looking in those particular areas. Now, you've been the greatest of all time in tennis for so long, but in venture capital, you've kind of been in stealth mode or under the radar. Uh -huh. And a lot, of, yeah. a lot of celebrities and athletes don't necessarily get taken seriously here unless they're investing directly yes. in their craft. Is there something motivating or energizing about trying to prove yourself at something new? Yes, and honestly, that's one of the reasons I have been investing so long and I have been in stealth mode for so long because I feel like, you know, whether it's an entertainer or it's an athlete, when the, we try to do something different, it's seen as uh, more of an opportunity as instead of a passion. This is actually a passion of mine. I wake up every morning thinking, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to open my computer and look at decks or just talk to the company or just see how what we're going to do today. Um, and it's something that is I'm super passionate about. And I just genuinely have so much fun with it. Um, but yeah, that's also another reason why I was operating in stealth. I really wanted to build my portfolio. I wanted to build my track record. So when people had questions, I would say, you know, we can just go to our track record or go to our data room and kind of see what we've done in the past. And it gives you a glimpse of when we do have um, bigger fund and being able to write those big checks, what we'll actually do in the future. Now, Allison, there's a lot of money flowing into the venture capital ecosystem, a lot of competitors out there, and VCs often claim they have a unique network. Your network with Serena's would seem to be unparalleled. How does that come to life on behalf of your startups? Are there any examples you can share? Yeah, one of the great things we're able to do is leverage the network that Serena's built for the 20 plus years in her career um, for behind the scenes connections. Obviously, Serena has lots of followers and being on Instagram or something like that is great. But when we can connect someone to the head, of, you know, the head of ESG at Nike, or we can kind of connect someone to someone at Amazon or Procter & Gamble, those are people that she's been partnered with for a really long time, but are either business development opportunities, potential acquirers, or a lot of them are investing themselves in startups in the space. So we've been doing a lot of work with that. You said yourself, Serena, you don't like to lose. What do you take from the court to investing? So that's a good question. You know, it's really about having a winning attitude and really just about um, understanding that you have to put a lot of time into this, you know, and you have to put a lot of effort into learning. And for me, I'm the kind of person that I like to really do my homework and really do my due diligence and really just kind of figure out exactly how, so I can be the best at it because, you know, I know what that takes. I know what it takes to be the best at something in the world. So I'm bringing that to the table and not many people have that, but at the same time, understand that the hard work and the dedication, and then also that champion's mentality of like, I like winning. So if you do, what does it take to win? And it's really just figuring that out and applying it into this, this part of, our, of my life. Allison, speaking of the track record, Serena Ventures has backed 13 unicorns, six exits to date. What is the advice you're giving to founders right now about the macroeconomic environment, given what we're seeing with inflation and interest rates and geopolitical uncertainty? Yeah, there's obviously a lot of risk right now in the world when you think about what that means. But we've also seen in times of kind of great economic distress, some of the best companies coming out of that. People are looking at new opportunities, whether they wanted to or not. Also, with interest rates going up, we have, you know, debt's going to start getting more expensive. So there's more opportunity for different forms of financing. And when we're doing it early stage, it's still the same course. It's make sure you have enough capital to get you to your next stage. How can we help you? What are the things that you need to build? to get to that next level and what are the tools that you need so for us it's 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 kind of business as usual because there's a lot of opportunity happening right now a lot of great companies that we are seeing and funding but also thinking about kind of making sure you have a little bit saved away for a rainy day because no one knows what's around the corner Serena, the New York Times ran a story about your fund and mistakenly printed a photo of your sister 
instead of you. You tweeted about this saying, no matter how far we come, we get reminded that it's not enough. How did you process that mistake? Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I, I've been through a lot in my career and in my life, and I don't let one thing tick me off too much. For me, I process, process it as an opportunity to use it, to let other people know that you're not the only one being overlooked and let people know, this is why I'm raising Serena Ventures. You know, this is why I want to make an impact because we can, we need people like me and people like Allison and like our team at Serena Ventures to be writing the big checks, to change that narrative so we don't have to be overlooked and just, just thought on and just, you know, just say, okay, let me just write, let me, write, let me just post this as, as fast as I can. I'm not even going to think about it because it doesn't really matter to me. And so it's really about changing that narrative. And it's, um, mm -hmm. I think that's so important because if you have a platform to talk about it and to discuss it, then it needs to be discussed. And um, yeah, I think it's important for other women and other people of color to see that you're not the only one struggling. I mean, I've been number one for, I don't know, eons <laughs> and um <laughs> i've won more grand slams than i could even find and um the fact that that can still happen is just and an, an, um and the truth that this is why we have serena ventures serena speaking of other great athletes tom brady unretiring what's your take on that <laughs> um I think everyone is happy about it, or most people were. I know I was. So it was definitely mixed feelings about him retiring and then kind of felt pretty good about the unretirement. I was like, oh, that's exciting. So, Well, like Tom Brady, you've accomplished seemingly everything possible on the court, and you've now started this second career and in investing, and you've got other business interests. How much longer are we going to see you playing tennis? And are you thinking about the R word more often? Right? I mean, I think every tennis player thinks about the R word as soon as they hit five years. <laughs> um, <laughs> because tennis is so intense. It's literally 11 months out of the year. Um, but I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm living for the day. I always tell people I'm not planning for tomorrow, only in business. And when it comes to tennis, I'm planning just for today. <laughs> All right. So what's the Serena slam for business? What does that look like? Um, I have never been asked that question and I've never thought about it. And I think that is such a good idea. Like what a good way. Cause I've have, I have a Serena slam in tennis. So what a good idea. I absolutely love that. I'm going to think of something and come back to you on that. I love that. You just challenged me. I love being challenged. She has Amazing. her eyes. We're going to have to check oh, you're trouble. You. I got work to do today. You just gave me, I don't want to do it all afternoon. <laughs> Um, Serena, you have, on that note, you have broken so many barriers. You have proved so many people wrong who didn't believe in you or support you. So I have to ask you about what, what happened to Naomi Osaka at Indian Wells. What's your reaction to this, especially given your own experience? Um, yeah, I, uh, I thought that, you know, I thought that everyone is different. I always say this. I always say everyone is different. Um... It's sport. I know a lot of people in sport, whether it's football, I know in basketball, I mean, shooting a free throw with all the noise and all the angry words and the fans, it's, uh, it's interesting, you know? So it's a part of sport, unfortunately. And you have to be able to, you know, keep going in those times because it's like, it's not gonna, unfortunately, people can be really mean. And that's terrible. And I've been around when people have been really mean. And um, you just kind of have to understand that that's their opinion and just they're, it's a free world and they're able to have that opinion. But you ha I think that, you know, for my opinion, it's like, okay, I'm not gonna have that meanness win you know it's like okay how do i do how do i do that and so unfortunately i hate that it's a part of sport but it's part of sport and it, it will probably always be a part of sport and so um but everyone's different 